Well, welcome to the November 20th Hadley School Committee meeting. It's already November, can't believe it. All right. Um, is there a motion to call the meeting to order? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, adjustment to the agenda, we are going to add a action item to be sure that we do take action and vote on the um, uh, revised and amendment agree revise an amended agreement for the Collaborative for Educational Services, so I'll add that as 6A. Um, but are there any other adjustments to the agenda for tonight? No, there aren't. Okay. So. Great. Well, with that, we will begin with our presentations, and the first one is the presentation of the Mass Certificate of Academic Excellence Award. Yes, so this is our favorite meeting of the year, where we recognize students. This evening, we'll give out two awards. We'll start with the Massachusetts School Superintendent's Award for Academic Excellence. This award goes to Alvin Lee. Alvin is currently the top, one of the top-ranked students in the class of 2020. He is the recipient of the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute Medal and Adams Scholarship Qualifier and has received a letter of commendation from the National Merit Scholarship Corporation for scoring in the top 3% of more than 1.5 million students on the PSAT. Holy guacamole, Alvin. That is, <laughs> take me a minute to figure out what 3% of 1.5 million is right now. Alvin completed AP Calculus as a junior and is a member of Hopkins Academy's Pro Merido Honor Society. He has been a member of Hopkins Academy's music program, including his work in the school's select jazz and pep bands, and is an accomplished musician. He is a concert-level pianist and plays piano for many of the school events and his community's choral performances. He has been a multi-year member of the Hadley's Evolution Robotics Team. The successes of the team have included qualifications for both national and world robotics competitions. Alvin has completed hundreds of hours of school and community service. That includes working with Special Olympics, working at local food pantries and survival shelters, and at his local church. Alvin hopes to attend Yale in the fall of 2020. Alvin, I want to thank you for all that you bring to our school community, for all that you've done. You're just a wonderful human being to have here. I've appreciated watching you in concerts and all that you do. Congratulations. This evening, we'll go to Catherine Carroll Saffron, and this award is the National School Development Council Award for Student Leadership and Learning and Academics. Catherine is one of the top ranked students in a very talented senior class. Her academic achievement is outstanding. She will have successfully completed 10 advanced placement courses by the time she graduates and has been recognized by the College Board as an AP Scholar with distinction. She is a member of the Hopkins Academy's Pro Merido Honor Society and is a recipient of the Bosch and Loam Honorary Science Award. And in addition to her academic achievements, Catherine has an exceptional record of leadership and service in the school and community. She was selected as Hopkins Academy's representative to Girls State in her junior year and has served as the vice president of her graduating class. She is also the president and founding member of the Hopkins Academy Key Club, which is near and dear to my heart. Thank you for doing that. And is the co-captain of the two-time district champion mock trial team. Catherine is very dedicated to service in the community and has completed more than 100 hours of service, including volunteering at drug addiction awareness centers. Catherine has also served as a student representative to the district's wellness committee and school council and has taken the initiative to start a mental health awareness club at Hopkins Academy. Catherine is undecided on a top choice for next year, but has applied to Harvard, John Hopkins, and Tufts universities. Congratulations. And I'm fond of saying that, I mean, we have many, many really intelligent, smart students who go to Hopkins Academy. 
but I often say to students that the difference between intelligence and wisdom is that wise people understand that they have to use their intellect in service to others and to something greater than themselves. And you two absolutely embody that. So thank you so much, not only for what you do, but for who you are. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you again. Now feel free to enjoy a spaghetti supper. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now okay. we introduce Dr. Bill Deal, Thank you. Executive Director of the Collaborative for Educational Services. Thank you. So I have three Thank things you. I'd like to do. One is to talk Thank about you. the collaborative yeah. generally, just to refresh people's memory, and to yeah. have a few points. Then to talk about what we do with Adley, um, and thirdly to go over what you want me to say. Well, I just don't want the back of your head, so if you could sit over by... Sure, let me oh, know. Okay, okay, I'll right. Welcome. I did it. Oh. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Okay. <laughs> I would never do that, though. I'm honest. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm all of the meetings. I have this sobering <laughs> presence. Feel sure. free to start again. Yeah. And then thirdly, to talk about the you know, articles of agreement that we're voting on and what the changes are so you know what, what they're doing about. So in your, I give you folders to kind of help you go through this world even quickly. All of you, I think, know about the collaborative. I think Mara has kept people up to date on it. Yes. Some of you have heard presentations before. So let me make a few points that talk about Hadley itself. So I start out always with the mission, vision, core statement, because we are mission and vision driven. We receive no funding directly from the state. There's no line item that supports collaboratives. So all of our, all of our work is funded by tuitions in our programs, or grants, contracts, uh, and um, state and federal grants. So we have to hustle all the time for money, and we are known for and we live and die by how well we live by our mission and vision. And also we have strong principles about social justice and equity. That's core to our mission, and so we try to live up to those things, and that, I think, helps our, our services to our districts be strong, be vital, be responsive, and really be excellent so people keep coming back and, and supporting our programs as well. So mission and vision driven, and we primarily focus on kids who have been placed at risk, kids and families. Behind that is our abbreviated version of our five-year strategic plan, which is done this year, developed a new one. And to point quickly out the four different goals, the first one, the first one for all of us, is meeting member district needs. So that's primarily what the collaborative is set up for. Uh, I like to talk about the collaborative being not a place that sits in Northampton, but a place that sits across two counties. So we, in terms of how we're governed, how we work, we really are collaborative of, at this point, 37 entities, 36 school districts, and the office building in Northampton. And I think we operate that way. I mean, I'm extremely pleased. Uh, Dr. McKenzie is very active with our super, superintendent roundtable, do a lot of stuff with the collaborative. Um, we're very, very fortunate by your support. And also, for, I don't know if she's humorous in this, in this meeting or not. Is she, is she funny? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. From the highlights of many of the superintendents in the areas, a month is to come to our monthly, may I tell us? On the <laughs> monthly Hampshire County meetings because Annie and the uh, superintendent of Granby are both very funny and they play off each other. And superintendents really get a chance to laugh. And there is so much laughter that happens that means really wonderful. And also a lot of learning. So they're able to share with each other their challenges, share new policies and practices. Um, it's really an excellent meeting. And we appreciate Andy's humor in all this as well. Also her leadership in terms of, we've been doing a lot of work this past year, educating our new, uh, our new representatives and senators in the area about education in Western Mass. And we got to that very early in the game, and he was an important part of that, did some presentations. And because of that, our delegation was very active in promoting education in state house, as well as issues that affected rural and small schools education. So there are several things that happened in this most recent bill, I think largely as a result of the fact that we pushed the legislators that represent small and rural districts. They got up there and they fought hard for this and got some things in that really are going to help us. So, and Andy was a big part of that. So to be commended for that as well. And Mayor is, a, is your representative on our board and a tremendous um, asset to our board. You know, always very smart and insightful and uh, brings a lot to the table. I really, really appreciate your service to us. 
So, first goal is to remember districts' needs. And we try to spend a lot of time finding out what districts need in all kinds of different ways and try to figure out ways to beat that. The second goal is to foster the success of children, youth, and families. So our second or major, one of our two major pockets of work is direct service programs. So we have special education programs, that was the, our origination was that. We have after school programs, we've got after um, early childhood programs and so on that directly serve children, youth, and families. So our staff are in front of those, those folks. The third goal is to develop exemplary educators, and this is our second kind of major body of work. We work with the people who work with the children, youth, and families, providing professional development um, and also licensure, a wide range of coaching, professional learning communities, and so on to them. And the fourth one is innovative practices. So one of the things we really um, try to work on and help districts with are some innovative practices to help schools better meet the needs of their young people. So we try to step ahead of the curve. We got really involved with social emotional learning before it became kind of a developer capacity. We have a lot of capacity in social justice and equity. We did that before um, changes in our federal government made some issues rise to the surface. So we were prepared for helping districts with those things. So that's part of our innovation. Next thing in your folder is this thing called services. I will not go through this just to point out this rep this basically talks about all the services that we have. And on the back of it is the 36 member school districts that we serve. And I will go more in detail in just a second about all of these. So you can read these at your leisure if you're not familiar with us. But behind that, kind of more easy to digest, is this colorful chart. Mm -hmm. One side is Hampshire County, one side is Franklin County. And on the far left hand side, we list all our different programs and services. Mm -hmm. And then we have for each district what things they use. So Hadley's at the fold. You've got to unfold it to see that. And just by glancing down, you can see we do an awful lot with Hadley, and Hadley does with us as well in almost all areas. Um, so we're really pleased with the, our partnership with Hadley. It's, it's one of the districts that uses us the most, and we work with them the most. And I'll talk about some specific things as we go. Um, this actually was from January 2018. So some things happened last year and aren't true this year. I don't think anyone at Mount Tom this year. Did you, did you? No, not right now. But you did last year. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe. I, I mean, not that you have to answer this now, but just looking at it, like um, I see we're in technology. There's nothing <laughs> checked uh, there. And I will say one very big thing we did was yeah. actually hire uh, our tech director from the collaborative. Yeah. So we yeah. just, mm -hmm. uh, instead of checking those boxes, we took an entire human being from the collaborative. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. That's one way to do it. <laughs> I think in the past you've taken advantage of that as well. I think yes. you guys are in yeah. in that area. That's why. Yeah. So behind that is a little more detail, going a little bit deeper, uh, a stapled couple of pages. And these are just some selected examples of these different areas. Um, so one example is a Laurie, Laurie Richler who works with our Emerging mm -hmm. America Initiative. It's a federally funded initiative. So we get money from the, from the uh, Collaborative Congress and the uh, National Endowment for the Humanities. And we're able then to provide some free services as well as provide some professional development, sometimes fee for service. So Laurie Richler, Laura Richler works with them and has been working with your elementary school teachers on um, the new social studies and history frameworks and really being prepared for that. Um, we've been doing social justice and equity. We did in East Hampton a lot more last year. I also want to point out we have an annual, relatively annual conference, Transforming Education for Social Justice, that we're very much welcome on you to come to. And last year we worked on these two other projects, working on a year-long project to train student peer facilitators there were dialogue sessions that build the capacity for civil discourse in classrooms and the schools. I believe you've been continuing that. Yes, and we have tried. Uh, I didn't secure the funding from the federal grant that I wrote into expanding that, but I just included it in our kaleidoscope proposal. So oh, you did? Okay. Good. Well, good. You know, good. Hopefully by Thanksgiving we hear. Good. And then see you guys will help us. And this was an exciting project for us because it is such a need. And this level of civil discourse in society is horrendous. And this is the time to teach kids how to, how to engage in civil, civil law mm -hmm. discourse. So we were pleased that this was the first chance we had to really dig into this, so we appreciate the opportunity. Um, and also last year, Hadley, Hatfield, and Graham became together and did a course together around supporting students with anxiety in the classroom. Hadley also participates in our Title III consortium. Anyone know what that is? No. Nope. No. Okay. So Title III is the federal title 
that provides uh, money to help support EL students, English language learners. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes to the state and from the state down to districts. If you have over 100 second language learners, you qualify to draw down money. And the only district in the two counties that has over 100 is Amherst. Mm -hmm. So all the other districts have some, but not enough to qualify themselves for money. So we have a consortium. We have now 25 districts in the consortium. We're able then to draw down the money from the state, provide professional development for teachers, money for tutoring for students. There's uh, some parent nights, a range of things that we were able to provide or have, give money to you to provide uh, for elves. So we're really, really pleased with that. And it's, um, as I talked to Annie earlier, it's, it's a bear of a grant because the paperwork is astonishingly difficult. <laughs> um, so, but it's a really important service. Uh, secondly, you take part in our cooperative purchasing program. It's been expanded this year. As you may know, the, the Hampshire County, Hampshire Council of Governments shut down this year. So we inherited all their cooperative purchasing for the schools in the area. So we were able to increase our amount there. And you've been taking part in that. Um, it may be changing next year, I think, in some areas, but it's been a good thing. And we have professional learning communities at the collaborative. Um, and you have someone participating in the English language learners one, uh, any participates in curriculum leaders, Title III directors, I believe your special ed director participates in that one. So again, it's a chance across districts to really share information uh, and, and cross-fertilize ideas. In special education, we have an, an academy in Northampton, especially for kids with challenges behaviorally. Um, and you had two students in, by January 2019, then three, and now you've got two. Uh, and that's really proud of that uh, work and helping you out in that way. In early childhood, you have, a, you have your own, I think with Northampton, according to family community engagement grant, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of our work is that with other districts who aren't part of uh, the Hadley-Northampton one. But we do have other things. So some of your people attended early childhood professional development workshops we gave. And then we have a program that's funded by the state about a family child home program for, early child, for family child care. So basically we have early learning specialists who go to family child care centers and work with them on developing their skills, their ability to work with kids and so on. So these family day care centers are often small centers and they don't have any opportunity and they aren't paid well enough, much opportunity to really learn best practice. This is an opportunity to do that on the ground. On the back side, another major piece that you're involved in is our strategic planning initiative for families and youth, the so-called Spiffy Coalition. We call it Spiffy because no one can remember <laughs> Paul loves Spiffy, one of our yeah. members, loves that acronym. I yes. do too. <laughs> yes. I do too. What it stands for is so, so long. Um, one area is we, every two years, administer the Prevention Needs Assessment Survey. It's a relatively lengthy survey in 8th, 10th, and 12th graders that really look at uh, both the assets that kids bring to the school and the assets they have in terms of social uh, interactions, uh, protective factors against other risks, and then also looks at risk factors um, in the school and in the community. It's pretty comprehensive, and we've been doing it for now for, I think, 16 years, and so we've got a, we have a longitudinal record of how schools are faring. Also, I should mention this needs assessment survey is developed in a way that we really can toss out answers that don't seem legitimate. Right? So students often, and we can detect those, I think generally we can take those and then not count them. One example is there's one question on the survey that asks, have you ever used and gives a fake drug, right? So anyone who marks yes on that, <laughs> that's an example. There are also a couple of questions that repeat themselves in different ways. So we try to make sure the data is clean because we know there's so much room for exaggeration. Um, so that, that's been done. I think you've gotten the results for how many? Yes, I yep. I'll be presenting this. Great, okay, great. We also, as part of the uh, Hampshire Council of Governments shutdown, inherited their Franklin, Hampshire Franklin Tobacco Free Community Partnership grant. We've been doing a lot of, of things in terms of substance prevention all along, uh, but this enabled us to really branch out more in tobacco and more importantly, vaping. So we're doing a lot of work with schools, including in Hadley, with information about vaping, prevention activities, uh, et cetera, and newsletters and information uh, for the schools and parents. We're also at this point working with Amherst and helping develop kind of a fifth through twelfth grade uh, set of curriculum, uh, recommendations, and so on that we'll share with other folks as we go. As you know, vaping, even though it's been banned, it is nevertheless a problem and may well become a growing problem again. Um, and 
even even the products that say no tobacco, they got tobacco, they got nicotine in them. So it's it's a really major issue and it's a major health issue. The last area is connecting activities. This is a grant from the state um, to the Regional Employment Board and from there to us in Hampshire County, a different organization in Franklin County. And the connecting part of the activities is to connect kids with the world of work, usually through internships, but also with support for um, career days, activities, uh, and that I think helps with some of the uh, develop, helps kids develop their resumes, comes in and helps with that. So Matt Brigham is our guy I'm doing that. And he said to me, he's collecting information that uh, Hopkins really was the most active, made the most progress last, this, last year and this year in this whole area of work. So I think uh, you guys have been really open to it and enabled us to really work closely with you on developing those skills. Um, I think the last bullet, which I'll point out, is also exciting for us. We, we again, from the state, got a grant for STEM at work, it's called. And this is specifically to find, and Matt does this, he finds internships for students in STEM industry or in colleges, and the college or industry have to pay the student. So these are paid internships rather than typical internships which are unpaid. And you had three students this past summer who qualified, they had to do an application, et cetera, et cetera, and were accepted, and they did their internships in biology, microbiology, and biophysics at UMass. So we're really proud of those students and pleased with that work as well. I'm so grateful. These two boats will find their way into two grants I'm writing. Oh, good. <laughs> and I just starred them, and I'm very happy. Thank good. You. Yeah. Are those typically seniors that wind up? Uh, no, actually, the, uh, um, I interviewed two of them. They were in one of the weekly updates, and they were going into their senior year. They were juniors. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. So they are somewhere That's between great. juniors. And yes. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know for all three, but two of the students. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have to be. I mean, we mm -hmm. do. There's a process to qualify, which isn't grade specific. Yeah, yeah. Great. It's a great opportunity. And we, uh, we, we did, we, our districts really took advantage of this so much that we really exceeded our goals. And so we're now in our second year of funding applying for a third year because we exceeded all the goals that the state set for us. So we're really pleased with that. It's a win-win as a consequence. The last page basically lists, for the past two years, the various open enrollment courses that your educators took part in. Whole range range of things, uh, a lot focused on assistive uh, technology, improving outcomes for students living in poverty and trauma, legal issues, etc. So these are again open enrollment. Teachers sign up for them. They come to collaborate usually to take them, um, and those are all important things as well. So that quickly so, gives you highlights of the things we've done in the faculty. Anybody have any questions? No, thank you, though, okay. for kind of, you know, Wait. taking the list and putting it into, you know, actual um, examples. Di digestible. Yeah. Very, yeah. 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 Really great. Mm -hmm. so, what? Yeah. Talk about it. No. Yeah. So the last thing I want to point out is this card at the back. Which um, you may not be familiar with it, but you might have to take a look at it. It's a really fun Facebook page that we developed. And we developed it like, two and a half years ago mm -hmm. when, when there was the uh, referendum about expanding the number of charter schools. And so our superintendents and our, our board both said, you know, we have a problem here that our, our local um, charter schools are able to put money into publicity. They're able to advertise. They're able to, and they really do a big campaign, if you remember that, about getting this referendum passed. And, and the, our school says, we don't, we don't have the money to do that. And so we said, well, what can you do collectively to present what's best about our schools? Not in opposition to, but to really have our own story out there. So we've been we've kept this up ever since then. And basically it's a Facebook page we keep adding stories to. And we go on a school's websites, we find good stories, ask for permission. It's really fun to go through because it's all over the Western Mass. Uh, there you have a number of stories on there. Um, and it's just a really fun evening entertainment to go through that and see the great things we do. Okay, the last thing I want to do then is talk about, if I may, the articles and the articles of evening. These are you have these electronically. I can give out hard copies yeah, since you go through. It's a highlighted parts there. Uh, so this this agreement was um, again uh, 2014. Um, it was uh, passed and signed by all the member districts. Um, so this is all you're voting on really is the amendments to it, um, not the other stuff that's already been approved. Um, so let me just point out what you're voting on. The major part, of course, is the two districts asked to join the collaborative gateway and, and 
Worthington. So that's a major part of it. In the second paragraph, what's highlighted is two-thirds majority approval. This is a change in the agreement. The agreement used to say it had to be unanimous approval by 36 member school districts, which they tend to all agree, but it takes a long time. <laughs> um, so now we have the two-thirds mark. We're over the hump with this. But I'll keep getting votes from uh, uh, the school committees because we want them to know what's going on. So it's from unanimous to two-thirds. A good thing for us. The next change is on page four. Page four. Yep. Not a major thing, generally speaking. For us, it is a major thing. The agreement used to say that the commissioner would, would uh, appoint not a liaison, but a member to our board, a voting mm -hmm. member. So all the collabs are going to have a voting member from Destiny sitting on them. And that totally changed the dynamics of the meeting, as you know. Mm -hmm. There's things we talk about in our meeting. We probably wouldn't talk about it in front of a Destiny mm -hmm. voting member. So we have a liaison who's on wonderful liaison, sits at Desi, helps us with all kinds of things, and this is a much better thing for, for everybody. So that's the second change that you're voting on, the third change. Uh, the next one is on page nine, and it occurs twice, 25%. It used to be 20%, so it's increased 25%. And this is a surcharge that we, that we uh, give to, or lay on, whatever you want to say, our non-member districts. Mm -hmm. Um, we try to keep our costs down for our districts. We have to prove to DESE every year that we're cost effective. The annual report and goes to the auditor as well. Um, and one way we do that is we charge non-member districts more than member districts, which of course also makes membership more appealing. Um, half of our business comes from non-members. This is a pretty substantial chunk that we receive that are able to keep other costs down. So it's moving from 20% to 25%. And the last one is on last page. Effective date. Which is the effective date, yep. And repeating the two thirds. Right. So that's those are the changes and I think that's a vote. Right. Are there any questions about the changes? No questions for me. Okay, so this is an action item that we do need a vote and the language is here um, that we essentially need um, to vote on uh, for the Hadley School Committee to approve the September 25th, 2019 revised and amended agreement of the Collaborative for Ed Educational Services. Is there a motion? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Do we need a verbal head? Uh, you don't need a verbal. Okay, we'll probably need you to sign the Yeah. Yep. Okay, Great. Remember, this is number 18, so we're getting there. All right, yeah. nice. I think you might have it done before the end of the year. Pardon me? Before the end of the year. Before the end of January. Yep, yep, yep. So we have a little, a little bit, it shouldn't be a problem now with two thirds. Sure. We, need, we need 24 for two thirds, so right. we're getting there. Great. <laughs> so thank, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank, thank you, you for everything you do and for uh, going over this with us. I think it's very My informational. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, good to see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Yep. I'll be in Title Three tomorrow. All right. Okay, back to, um, uh, let's see, student representative report. So Mr. Kelly is not with us tonight. We will hold on that until the yep. next meeting. Uh, first reading of district policies. Yes. Woohoo! No vote required this no. evening. This no. is just a first reading. And uh, Kimara, I don't know if you want to walk through this second. I'm happy to, but that would be great. Yeah. No problem. So our first one, program for students with disabilities. This is this has new language in it. No, instructional programs. I'm sorry, AHB. Yeah. There is new language uh, in this. All the new language that is recommended in any of these was recommended either by MASC or um, Attorney Dupre. Typically, we start with MASC. Um, so we needed to make sure that the age was correct. It shouldn't be 21. It should read through 22. Mm -hmm. And um, the final statement was a uh, recommendation by MASC that Attorney Dupre approved. The second one, Programs for Students with Disability, is review only. Remember, our goal is to try to read the entire policy book every year. Mm -hmm. uh, same with Curriculum Accommodation Plan. That was review only. Mm -hmm. And observations, uh, excuse me, observations of... And accommodations were language changes. There were language changes yeah, in those, right. so review only. Sorry about that. 
um, looking at the preschool program. Our review only. Yeah, yeah. both the preschool okay. program Excuse and the preschool me. admission procedure yeah. were review only. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go through the papers I have right in front of me. That's yep. easier. So the, the uh, curriculum accommodation plans, the languages, uh, the language changes. Some of the big language changes were um, to avoid delineating specifically an assessment that we would use because that can change. So, for example, Dibbles was in there, another favorite of Mr. Pfeiffer, so he's not here for it. So just to say, um, in general, tiered systems of support generally talk about universal screening and progress monitoring measures without naming specific assessments that we would use because those sense. could potentially change. And I just want to make sure any other language changes there. And there's also the removal of the K through 6 on the tiered system supports? Yes, because um, we want tiered systems of support um, to expand. Um, they're available to all students, and even though this is under Hadley Elementary School, I mean, technically we use tiered systems of supports, including our preschool program, and also we didn't want to imply that we ended it at the mm -hmm. Hadley Elementary School. Mm -hmm. Is there any need where um, you've taken out, mm -hmm. and I get the assessment names can change, any kind of reference to it being a formal assessment? I mean, or I'm reading this bullet, universal screening and progress monitoring measures are administered to students in grades K through 6. Is that understood that those should be kind of formal assessment standardized that, measures? Yes, standardized measures, how, in, rather than maybe a student self-assessment or an informal, right. you so know, something that is less um, transferable right. across. So that's a good question. In the state. Almost always in universal screening it would be a standardized measure. Progress monitoring, we include standardized measures, but we don't necessarily limit it to standardized measures. So yep. we might progress monitor a student also including things like teacher observation, mm -hmm. curriculum-based measures, or student work samples. Okay. Um, so it wouldn't always. I mean, certainly the initial universal screening measures that we would use, like those are fast, would be benchmark normed, um, but uh, the progress monitoring might also include additional measures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, as long as universal screening is understood, then that that's that's inclusive of that's what you would yeah. expect your standardized. Yeah. No, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think I'm pretty sure those were all of the language changes there. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, and so next, the preschool program, and that is for review only, followed by the preschool admission procedure, which is also Same. review only, mm -hmm. and um, then in our supplement, not supplant, you're right, in that policy, IHBD, we took out DIBBLES, Universal Screening and Progress Monitoring Measures, um, and uh, same thing on page four, Universal Screening Tool or Tools instead of um, DIBBLES. The other two tests that we list in Title I, we still use consistently, Gates McGinnity and Developmental Reading, those are those data that I put in the Title I evaluation every year. Um, Title I parent involvement procedures, the language change um, mm -hmm. was to Title I director um, instead of the director of student services, so that doesn't fall under special education anymore. Um, in addition, uh, we changed um, on the second page of that. Um, so. You can see this is how much this has changed since uh, it was initially created where it said there are currently no English language learners in the program, right? Mm -hmm. So we do have English language learners in the Title I program. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot more than when this was originally. We probably have fewer than 10 in the entire district at the time this was written. Um, so uh, on page three of this same policy, um, language changes because we don't refer to No Child Left Behind mm -hmm. anymore. It's so we just said federal requirements, um, our district accountability status, and instead of these other things like AYP that were part of No mm -hmm. Child Left Behind. Um, we don't use Chalk Talk anymore, um, so we refer to the weekly uh, email and the annual evaluation, including information that you are all presented with an annual program evaluation of Title I every year. 
And uh, English language learners, which I think is the last one that we, um, so again, took out No Child Left Behind and just, it reads for the law. And this is just a first reading, so there's no vote required, and we vote at the second reading next month. Great. Any questions or clarifications needed at this time? Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you for the work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. Um, and then last presentation discussion item is a review of the conflict of interest ethics documents. So I told all of you that you would see more of these in your packets. Mm -hmm. What I am going to do, there's no vote required, but I'm going to have them at the close of our meeting. You can quickly review them. Um, this is just recently, we have some, stu uh, some teachers at the elementary school who um, one of the parents in our community makes it possible for them to receive professional development the developed PD itself is valued at more than fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and um, through the parent's work, the parent makes it possible for the teachers to receive it free of charge. Mm -hmm. So there's disclosure forms. Mm -hmm. We just said in accordance with Attorney Dupre's um, recommendation to us that you all would review them rather than copying them into every packet. These multiple pages, I have them here for your review, but you don't need to vote on them. Okay, good. How wonderfully generous of the uh, parent. Yes. Please yes. send mm -hmm. thanks. Yes. Okay, public comment. No public. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a comment? <laughs> I love my <Miss> Kevin. <laughs> right answer. <laughs> okay, school committee reports. Uh, policy. We, well, we just it. saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scott. Mm -hmm. Policy and um, Tara um, gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Yeah, I, um, I, I think that's a girl. There's a lot of babies around this. Everybody's room, asking, and I don't know. Yeah, I haven't heard. <laughs> I saw a girl on Facebook, really beautiful. Um, and so um, she's an amazing person, Tara, um, because she's like ready to come back at the next policy meeting, <laughs> ready to tackle more policies. And like I think um, it's wonderful to take um, time off too, and encourage her to consider doing that. But we're going to be back into the policy game. Yes. Next cycle. Yes. Next month. Uh, yes. Congratulations to Tara. I'm sure that she's watching now. And I will say that Miss Dow, the principal at the elementary school, said to me, Tara must have had her baby because she emailed me at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, that's what it was. She was insinuating that. Because I have this baby on have lots of free time. Miss Jen said, that explains that. Yes, that's great. Congratulations to Tara and yes. the family. Uh, so start time task force. Some of them Yeah, tonight. So uh, yeah. when we leave here, I'll be at home. We're doing that by Zoom. And right. we had a great first meeting. And tonight we'll be talking about some of the research we dove into and our plans for getting stakeholder input. So that Excellent. will start at 7 at my kitchen table. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you for that. Yeah, sure. thank you. <laughs> Finance and Tri Board, um, just to recap that we had the um, annual town meeting and that the uh, warrant articles that we had passed on town floor, mm -hmm. so now some of them need to go to a vote in terms of um, further approval. And we had a good, uh, again, display in the back mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the locker rooms um, and the uh, the technology upgrades and new events, I yes. believe, were part of that. So, okay. Yes, nice display. Nice. Yep. I, th I feel like there is, there is a, I'm glad this is on here, a finance tri-board meeting coming up mm -hmm. uh, at that evening. We, East Hampton e Savings SB. is going to present That's right. a very generous check of $10,000. Thank you to East Hampton Savings Bank Foundation. We're very appreciative. Mm -hmm. They also are investing Consider all through the town. They are making a generous donation to the library, to the senior center. Um, so they'll be presenting kind of a large investment in Hadley. That is on December 11th. Thank you. That's Great. December 11th mm. at 6:30 is Tri Board, which is School Committee, FinCon, mm -hmm. and um, Thought Board. That would be the important yep. people. This is their meeting. <laughs> yeah, really. And then at seven, we'll present the check. So if Great. anybody would like to be there. December 11th. Count me in I'm there. And that does remind me we do have to vote to accept yeah. the generous gift from the East Hampton Savings Bank of a total of $10,000. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we've written a thank you note to them as well. 
Um, and I think you also acknowledge them. I forget if you acknowledge them in your light, the last superintendent email yes, or I just did. an email to us. But yeah, um, thank you. And mm -hmm. we do need a vote. Um, roll mm -hmm. call vote. No. Nope. Okay. Is there a motion to? approve the acceptance of $10,000 gift from East Hampton Savings Bank for Hadley Public Schools? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay, well, definitely uh, we'll be at that December 11th event. Mm -hmm. um, Fields and the uh, CPA updates. So that's, we're in, uh, with the fields, we have, uh, we are still waiting for the final bid specifications, we're waiting for some soil samples to come back, but we're having the bid specifications should be done shortly. We anticipate um, going out to bid within the next week or so, and so we, again, participate awarding shortly after, probably the start of the year, maybe toward the end of January, we're breaking ground um, in the next summer. Great. Great. I really, I can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe that. It's shovel ready. It's shovel yeah. ready. Yeah. Not to bury me, because that was no. my fear. So that's, I'm really excited. Great. And then, is there anything else on the collaborative? No. Like um, wonderful organization, as you can see, such mm -hmm. breath. Um, nice to have them here to put a little bit more depth and nuance into all that CES does. We're lucky to be a part of that organization. Okay, a couple action items. The approval of the accounts payable warrants that were submitted in October 2019. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. I will abstain. Mm -hmm. uh, is there uh, a motion to approve the warrants, payroll warrants submitted in October 2019? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have the October 28th, 2019 minutes. Uh, any questions or um, changes to those minutes? No. Okay, is there a motion to approve? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second. And second. <laughs> Aye. 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 Great. Uh, we did the last action item and we voted on that. So now it is just our regular meeting date. So typically we would have been meeting in yeah, it's December. Gonna be over break. So I probably should send yeah. out an email to folks. Oh, they're day 21. Season, right? Yeah, because the date would have been the would have been it would have been the twenty third. That would be the twenty third. Yeah, yeah, which is probably not a good date. No. So maybe um, we can look at um, the week before, the week before mm -hmm. maybe the sixteenth. Yeah, or seventeenth. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll probably send out. I think I might get yeah, my brother's on the sixteenth. So I'll probably check around the seventeenth. I'll check all through there. I'll send out some options. I'll make okay. sure I do that Great. tomorrow. Sounds good. Great. Good. Anything else for the go to the order? I think so. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.